Welcome to this week's episode of In-Depth Outdoors. Each week, the In-Depth Outdoors staff will take you to North America's top ice fishing destination, where we'll fish longer, go further off the beaten path, uncover untapped fisheries in your backyard, and punch more holes in search of the biggest fish and the hottest bites. We'll share time-proven tips, introduce new lures and cutting-edge fish-catching techniques. We'll shine the spotlight on overlooked bodies of water and open eyes to underutilized species that feed aggressively and fight hard under the ice. All this with one goal in mind, to help you catch more fish and have more fun doing it. This is In-Depth Outdoors, brought to you by Lake Master, leading in accuracy, following with success. Markham High Power Ice Sonar, Snowsuit Performance Winter Wear, engineered with you in mind. Otter Outdoors, get out onto the ice and into the outdoors. Custom Jigs and Spin, the hottest baits below the ice. Strike Master Ice Augers, introducing the Solo, the ultimate ice auger. Thorn Brothers, makers of premium quality custom rods for the ice angler. On today's episode of In-Depth Outdoors, we're in Hayward, Wisconsin, fishing with Tanner Wilds. We're headed to a nearby lake that is known for its big crappies and heavy fishing pressure. Unlike most of our shoots where we take great pains to get away from the crowds, this episode is filmed on what is commonly known as a community hole, where large numbers of anglers congregate through the quality of fish available and where only the most refined techniques will consistently put these heavily pressured fish on the ice. Definitely a crappie. First thing in the morning here. All right. Here we go. Fishing with Tanner Wilds here, Tanner Wilds Guide Service, Hayward, Wisconsin, Hayward, Wisconsin area lake. And uh, Tanner doesn't have us on some uh, remote drive-in lake. We're fishing a community hole here. Real heavily pressured crappies, and we're using a combination of jigging and these tip downs that we just caught this fish on to tempt these really heavily pressured crappies up to the top of the ice. So we're going to show you some techniques today. Uh, going to show you some uh, real finesse jigging presentations, how to use these tip downs to put crappies on the ice like this when you know it's a real tough bite. There we go. That's a way to start the day. Sun coming up. And I think we've got ourselves a nice crappie here. Oh yeah. There we go. These tip downs are so effective. I just love them. You know, you'd think a guy would be able to jig as effectively, but that's just not been the case here. There's that little treble hook. That's how Tanner's rigging these. It's a number 18 treble yep. tanner? Gotcha. Just a tiny little gold treble hook. Some of them do have an Aberdeen, but that one was hooked just perfectly in that outer lip. That's a great example of a high pressure crappie right there. Boy, those little trebles look good. Yep, don't they? It's just tiny little barb to them. Right in the meat. There we go. But uh, that's a nice way to start the day. Let that one go. There we go. Ooh, good fish. Got a lot of weight to it. I don't know if that's a crappie or not. Nope. Big green fish. There we go. Nice bass. Nice bonus fish on ultralight tackle. It's always a good fight. It's a thing when you're fishing shallow weeds like that, you're always catching some bass like that. So it's always a good change of pace. Put her back. Always a good fight on light tackle, so let's see if we can't get some crappies. As crazy as this might look, it's actually really effective. What we're doing is we're looking down the water column here and we're keeping an eye on those really brightly colored jigs and we can see when the crappies come up and inhale them 
And you know, we've talked about this before during the course of this program. These fish are not trying to eat these baits. They're almost sampling them. They come up and just breathe them in and shoot them right back out. So we're just watching for that brightly colored jig to disappear for that split second. We literally set the hook with our one hand and then pick up the rod and fight them the rest of the way to the top of the ice. Not doing that, just fishing with your flash or trying to feel the bite, we've had no success. I honestly haven't caught a single fish today based on feel. It's all been on sight. There he is, all right. Man, just a tough, tough bite today. I mean, not much going, oh geez, not much going on and they're biting real light. Yeah, you can't even feel it with the spring bobbers. You gotta actually watch them grab it and, oh, he wasn't getting away. There we go. Nice crappie, about normal size out here. Like I said, it's just a real tough, tough bite and you can't even feel it with their spring bobber. You actually gotta watch the fish actually grab your bait. They're about five, six feet down. We're in real clear water and about 10 feet of water with good cabbage in it. And we're just kind of hole hopping here. And yeah, like I said, just watching the, watching the jig and watching the real light bites. So cool, get another one here. So the other key presentation we're using here are the tip downs. And uh, obviously I can't even get through explaining the two presentations without this tip down to my right continuing to, to go down. And that's that neutrally weighted rod that pivots on a center point. Uh, we've got just a very simple presentation down below that rod tip on that tip down. It's a split shot, small hook, and a minnow. And when that fish grabs that bait because it pivots on a point and it's balanced so it takes almost no effort to pull it down. And that's where a lot of our bigger fish are coming today because that fish grabs that bait and he might drop it two or three times, but the bait never moves, nobody ever sets the hook too early, and eventually that crappie comes back, grabs that minnow, and pulls that tip all the way to the water. And when you run into a very tough crappie bite, bluegill bite, perch bite, whatever, you might want to consider employing that type of product in your presentation. There we go. Nice. Oh, there's a good crappie. Man, just late morning. Again, just you could see a school come through on the Markham there and had one pretty aggressive one just come in and that one actually hit it pretty hard. Most of them have been real finicky, like we said, breathing them in, but that one came up, that one just pulled that spring bobber right down. So it's kind of nice, maybe they're picking up. goes. A lot of fun. That was a nice crappie. <laughs> but what we're doing is every time we get a, a tip down, we're kind of moving the whole fleet in the direction of our last bite. So uh, we had a lot of our tip down set about 40 yards in that direction this morning and we've slowly refined our search area and moved them down here. It's about what, maybe a foot, foot and a half shallower than where we started? Yeah. A little bit heavier weeds here though. And that's, that's where those crappies are now, right in the middle of the day with these high skies. So. It's all about refinement. You know, pay attention to where your last bite came from. Move some more baits in those areas. Stay on the fish. There we go. That one. Oh, jumped out of the hole for me. Nice. Just sight fishing, you know. Just looking at that little trailer, and as soon as that disappears, there you go. Let that one go, we got plenty for dinner. Got him! <laughs> that's exactly the way that's supposed to go. That is not a great big fish, but that is three times he's out. What this fish has been doing is he's been playing a little cat and mouse game with that minnow. Anytime that tip down would come down, this fish would drop the bait. This time, I sat right next to it and just waited for him to take it again. It was just like clockwork. Not a monster fish. You know, we've had 12, 13 inch crappies today. I'll remember this one the most because, uh, you know, I hate to say it, hey, I outsmarted a fish, <laughs> but we'll let that one go. <laughs> cool. There we go. On the tip down, midday. We're just kind of slowly pecking away at it. It's not fast and furious action, but we're getting a few fish here and there and it's all starting to add up. Late morning, just seems like we're getting a good bite here. So get back to it. We got a lot of fish moving through in schools and yeah, getting a few of them to bite. 
Uh, we're right here in the middle of the day. The sun's really, really high. And in this clear water, these fish are just bound to slow down with their, uh, with their feeding pattern. So what we're noticing now is as that tip down starts to drop, we need to put our running shoes on. We need to get here in a hurry before this tip down bottoms out. So what we've been seeing is this tip down's been going down real slow. And when it gets to this point, the fish will drop the bait. So it's been important to us to get here as quickly as we can wherever we are. And we're out exploring now. We're not just gonna sit in this one spot. We've been doing that right there. Oh, he missed it. But you know, that just makes my point perfectly well. Uh, we're out here, we're roaming around, and we need to get to these baits quickly. And my next point is, uh, the clothing you choose on a fishing day like today is just really important. Uh, you know, most ice anglers think, hey, I'm gonna buy the warmest gear I can find. And you know, that in and of itself, most of the winter, is the right choice. But you know, the, the gear that we're wearing here today is a snowsuit, and it's designed to function incredibly well from crazy below zero, all the way up to, it's almost 60 degrees today. And that means you need some intelligent engineering. This clothing breathes very well. Not only is it very warm in January when you need it, but on a day like today, it breathes. It's very comfortable. You can run around like uh, Tanner's doing and not build up a huge sweat. And uh, that's important because we're sight fishing these fish. Most of the guys around us, they've stripped off their cold weather gear because it does not breathe. And it means they're not able to get down on the ice, kneel down, get right down on the ice where they're gonna get wet. We're staying bone dry. We're able to keep our heads down the holes, run after these tip downs and stay after these fish. So this is one of those instances where the clothing you choose really aids in the presentation. Oh, there we go. Got one. Not a, not a giant, but a nice midday crappie here. It's starting to warm up. Fish are starting to move around a lot more. This morning we had a little flurry of activity, but now we're looking down the whole scene. School's coming through. Uh, seem like they're getting more aggressive too as the day's warming up. So this one came through. It was about the sixth one through in a school and got him to bite. He was pretty aggressive. Just dropped the jig down on him and he hit it right away. Well, this one's bottomed out here. I can see that this fish is hooked up middle of the day here now just about everybody's left the bite's been tough tanner's done a great job keeping us on fish we've made some real key moves here and these tip downs just keep producing this is a big fish look at this look at that that's beautiful people right there conditions couldn't be tougher you know high skies tanner just checked his phone we're in the 60s right now and we're still putting fish on the ice. About eight foot of water. I mean, that just doesn't get any better than that. That's a big slab. And you know what? When they finally do take one, Tanner, they take it. I don't know what it takes to trigger these fish, why 10 of them swim by, and then finally one gets it. Yeah. Just glad it happens that way. There we go. Here's that little gold hook. Aberdeen hooks so nice. All I did is I just pushed my finger down in its mouth and just pushed that hook loose. I'll be able to release that fish without any issues whatsoever. But this is quality fishing. And you know, for people that are watching out there, we could have gone to some you know, re re remote backwater lake and probably stomped them. It just doesn't mean as much. When you come to a community spot like this and you put together a great game plan, you put all those finesse pieces together and you, you might have to work a little harder, but which we love to do, this is the result. So. I'm going to let that one go. That is a beautiful fish. <laughs> Bye, sweetheart. You know, that's a 10 inch hole that's been enlarged by all this warm weather. And you saw how much of that hole that fish took up. It's quality. One of the keys to catching crappies late in the season like this is understanding the movements crappie make just at ice out. And where we're positioned right now really can be considered one of those classic late ice crappie spots. We're in a transition area where these crappies are funneling from the main basin portion of this lake up into what might be the mother of all spawning bays. There's about 300 acres of three to five foot soft bottom bay behind me with vegetation at the far back end of this bay. And what's going on, this is the deep water channel that comes up out of the main lake that feeds that bay. And that's a real standard pattern for crappies at this time of the year. They're gonna transition from deep water and they're gonna use those deeper, deeper runs, those highways to feed them up into these bays. And uh, you can see where our spread is. 
we're literally right at the top end of a deep water run, a funnel that brings these fish into this area. There's healthy cabbage growth here. And all this detail is shown on the Lake Master map uh, for this lake. They've got a great map for the Hayward area. And uh, I think one of the things that uh, uh, is a real tribute to the quality of this map is that this area, which has been fished by the locals for decades, is shown clearly on this chip. And it really gives you a great idea of why these fish are using this area. You've got about uh, 10 to 12 foot of water, runs right up into this bay, and that's the highway that funnels all these crappies into this area. My ice guiding usually starts about end of November. Our early ice, we're always pan fishing or walleye fishing. Um, if available, we start ice fishing on the Chippewa flowage, which you can ice fish till end of November. And then we switch to the big clear water lakes where trophy walleyes are uh, quite common. Then throughout the winter, we're doing walleye and northern pike and then switching between panfish. And then one of my favorite things to do is starting in about mid-February is the late ice pan fishing, including the crappies. We have a tremendous crappie fishery here, very high average size, and some of the best crappie fishing all year is during the late ice from about February until ice out, which is usually about mid-March or so. Usually the first couple weeks of March, we have very safe ice, and it's when we catch the biggest bluegills, crappies, and perch. So if you want to make a trip up here, just give me a call. To put these fish on the ice, Tanner and I are both using uh, two key presentations, uh, one of which is we're using very fine and very sensitive graphite rods. Tanner's using a, a, a spring bobber on his. This is a quiver stick from Thorn Brothers. And another real similarity between these uh, setups is neither one of us are using a spinning reel. And I think that's real important for this uh, presentation because these fly reels, and this is a, uh, uh, an item that's really been uh, brought to the attention of the ice fishing market by the guys at Thorn Brothers. Uh, these, these fly reels eliminate line twists that spinning reels will give the line. And on these real tough bites, when these fish are real picky, having that jig underwater doing that rotate and spin uh, for you know, sometimes minutes at a time uh, is real detrimental to the bite. Because this line comes off straight off the spool, without any rotating to get it to lay around the spool like you have in a spinning reel, there's no line twist. So that line goes down straight, the jig doesn't spin, and more often than not, that's a real key factor in getting these fish to bite. For line, we're both using two pound fluorocarbon, and uh, I've got my uh, uh, plastic tipped on a, a very small custom jigs and spins gill pill. And these fish are so lethargic that instead of using an entire ratso tail, I've cut it down so the body's half size and threaded that on the gill pill. And that seems to be working pretty well. I got myself a pike here. Thankfully he's not a very big one because if he was, this would be a very short fight. Look what I got. Come here, there we go. Just a little guy. I would imagine if they get much bigger than that, it's over real quick, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Those little Aberdeen hooks just hook great right in the corner of the mouth. What have we had? Three or four pike? Yeah. We've only lost one, and that was on a treble hook. What's the biggest northern you've ever landed on one of those? Not much bigger than that <laughs> That's one. That's about it, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It doesn't last too long if they are. That's the tops. <laughs> This is a really neat setup, but it's something that is just not used in Minnesota at all. It's these tip downs. Now they're so sensitive. It's that neutrally balanced rod tip that just doesn't take any pull by these crappies at all to get them to dip down. That's not a big crappie, but he took the bait all the way. These crappies and these weeds, they're, they're just always moving. So the biggest thing to stay on top of the fish is you've got to stay mobile too. And all we're doing is we just pop a pile of holes in the, during the day and we're just moving hole to hole with the, the camera here and just looking for a school of fish. You find a school of fish, we come set up on it, usually catch a few and then the school moves on. So you've got to be able to stay mobile and this camera really helps out on finding the fish. You know, like I said, we're just going to the holes, dropping the camera down, finding a school of crappies and then we're catching them. Geez, there we go, all right. Man, just sight fishing again. At the middle of the day, that sun popped out. And, oh, there's a nice one. Man, you really, you gotta be watching that jig. It's such a light bite. Like I said, even spring bobbers aren't making a difference. You're just coming up and just seeing part of your jig disappear, not even the whole jig. And 
you got to be watching that, otherwise you're missing them. Because you'll watch them, they'll, they'll bite it real quick and spit it out just as quick as they bite it. And you got to be on the ball. And that's what you get. Late ice, nice crappies like that, sight fishing. You know, we're in pretty clear water and we're only about five feet down, but I like having a jig where you can actually see it real well. That kind of makes a difference with sight fishing. So I'm using a lot of whites, um, silvers, stuff like that, something I can see real clear. And then I'm using a plastic trailer that's uh, right now we're, we're using pink. Again, something very visible, kind of more natural. Some of them the crappies really like out here, they like the pink, but it's something very visible that you can see the crappie eat part of it. And that's when you know you got to set the hook. So you got to have something visible so you can actually see them eat part of the jig. This one's a little different. It just kind of dropped down a little bit and feeling fishier. Got one. It doesn't feel huge. The fish didn't even pull the, the whole tip down down. It just kind of tilted about halfway. Not a, not a giant crappie, but a good one. I'll take it. Tip down. Oh, all right. Oh, there's a fighter here. Oh, nice crappie, nice crappie. All right. Oh, hook just right on the nose of it there. Man, that's a real nice crappie right there. It seems like our bite lately has all been on the tip downs. We can't get much going jigging. We can see them down there. They're just swimming right by our jigs, but the tip downs are consistently getting the fish for us. So we'll put that one back. All right, get it baited up, catch another one. There we go. On the tip down. Hit a bit of a lull this afternoon, but you bet. There he oh, is. Holy cow. Oh, nice. Nice. You know, we've had some bigger, we've had some smaller, but we've had a lot of fish today. Yeah, we have. Under some very tough conditions. And I tell you what, in that kind of uh, situation, they count double. Uh, <laughs> we've had a lot of people come and go today. We stuck it out. And I'm pretty sure that if we had kept every fish we iced, we would have had a tremendous bucket of crappies. Uh, what we, we kept like four or five each. Right, yep. You know, that's a real sensible keep for a couple of guys that just want to have some fish tonight. No point in keeping everything you catch. So we've been putting a lot of back for seed. They'll be there for you when you come and fish with Tanner. And you know what? I've had a blast. I have really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. You bet. And I look forward to coming back this summer, maybe getting some walleyes or some muskies with definitely, you. Definitely. You definitely. Know, people need to remember, he's a four month or four seasons of the year guide. So I've had a great time from Tanner and I. This has been In Depth Outdoors. We'll see you next week. Whoop. Bye, buddy.